be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. 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 Today that the Lord has made, amen. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Yes. And this is another day that the Lord has kept us. Amen. Amen. Our hand up. 
they have not known them. My Praise you, the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. 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 That's Amen. a beautiful thing. Just to let you know that, that the poor frost is nothing but frost. Amen. Amen. Yes, that's all it is. It's just frost. Amen. So we thank God for the light and the grace of the Lord about Psalms 147. Y'all, we need to sing unto the Lord. And it says, sing unto the Lord with what? Thanksgiving. Yes. Sing praises upon the heart, upon our God. So we have a voice to sing today. Yes. We have hands that we can clap, feet that we can sing. Come on. And we can give all honor and glory belongs to the Lord. Amen. Come on, bless his name today. Bless his name today. Amen. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all that is
No, we can't do anything without you. I can't make it without you. I can't move. I can't walk and have my being. Lord God, I need you every day of my life. Every step that I take, I need you. Every breath that I breathe, God, I know it's your Ruah spirit, which is that breath of life that you give to us. And I want to thank you for that today, Lord God. Thank you for giving us all strength in our bodies, Lord God, today for being here in the presence of the Lord. God, I ask you to continue to bless the ears of your, the ears of the recipients that are going to be able to receive this word. Let it find good ground. Let it bring forth a hundredfold. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, and I just heard a voice that says and spoke something to me, and I had to find that scripture. Go with me in the book of Proverbs. In the book of Proverbs. And this is what I heard the voice of God said. And when God speaks, and I'm, I'm doing something else, or, or I might be in my car riding or something like that, and I hear a scripture, and I know that scripture is the voice of God, that oracle of God that speaks directly to your spirit. And it said to me, and I'm going to read, to go to, with me to the third chapter of Proverbs, and when you get it, just say amen. And listen, when the people back in biblical time, when they, when they read the Bible, everybody stood up yes. and referenced. And I thought people just do it because they do it, you know. No, but they actually reverence the word of God because his word of God is God oracle. It's the mouthpiece of God that speaks to each and every last one of us. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to start with the first verse and I'm going to tell you where I'm going to stop all that. It said, my son, forget not my what? Law. Y'all read it with me. But let thy heart, what, keep my commandments. The reason, why, listen, the reason why we keep God's commandments, he said, my son, forget not my law, but let thy heart, not your, let thy heart, your heart is who you are. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Come on, somebody. He said, but let thy heart keep my commandments. For what? For live a days and long life. Somebody better say amen. And peace shall they add to thee. I'm, I'm telling you something in this here particular proverb, which is the wisdom that Solomon had. It's just great wisdom. And it said that we are let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Buy them about thy neck. Write them upon the tables of thy heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding to the sight of God and man. This is what my mom used to always tell us. Y'all stay in the word of God. Whatever y'all sing about, live what you sing about. When you read the word of God, live what you read in that Bible. She, this is what she always, she said, whatever you preach about, live what you preach about. Somebody yeah. needs to say amen. amen. So, and then it said this, trust in the Lord, come on, with all thy heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. This is the voice that spoke to me, this sixth verse. Listen at this. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. And he shall direct that path. Let me tell y'all something. Do we acknowledge God in all of our ways? That all of your ways mean this. You may be seated. I'm going to talk from this point. It is a pathway that we walk upon to get from one place to another. It's specific direction. Come on, somebody. It's a space in order for you to walk and to proceed. Sometimes when you have clutter in your pathway, you cannot walk that straight path of God because you got <laughs> Lord, anybody can talk about this as I can. In that right, Paul. <laughs> when you have clutter everywhere, you cannot walk straight and walk a clear pathway. So God said, 
wait a minute. Uh, and, and if I take a title today, brother, it would say, acknowledge him in all of thy ways. Everything that you do, every place, in the direction that you need to go, we need to learn how to acknowledge God with me, that we're going to put our trust in him, our confidence in him, acknowledge him to know that he is the superior being. Come on, somebody. We're going to trust him to lead and to guide us into the right path. Come on, somebody. We need to know that let all of our ways, everything that we do, every day of our lives, come on, somebody. We need to learn how to acknowledge him. And that means this. Don't do nothing without Jesus. Come on, somebody. Don't do nothing without consulting him. Don't do anything without him. Somebody better say amen. Proverbs 16 and 3 says, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Somebody better say amen. I dare for us to just commit everything that we own, all of our ways, everything that we do, we can consult God about everything just like David did. Come on, somebody. This is a message that everybody needs to learn how to acknowledge God. Don't look at me. I won't look at you. Don't look at Brother Spook and Spike or this one or that one. Look And Xavier said, oh my God, am I committed my ways unto the Lord? Somebody better say amen. Acknowledge me to express recognition or make notice or to express gratitude or anticipation for or to, to recognize, to admit people, we got to learn how in order for us to be able to get on that right path. Come on. He will get and create a pathway of righteousness for us. Come on, somebody. Somebody better say amen. When you put God first, when you acknowledge him, when you trust him, when you believe in what his word is saying, somebody better say amen. Commit thou works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. You have the right thoughts in your mind. Come on, somebody better say amen. Then it says that because when we do this, we are trusting God for the impossibility. Can you say amen? People, we got to learn this. We got to learn this. Amen, amen. Go with me to the book of 1 Samuel. And I'm telling you, I'm not going to be up before you know. I'm just telling you some scriptures. In all of your ways, everything that you do, you need to consult the Lord first. Can you say amen? Lord, is it okay for me to do A, B, C, and D? Come on, somebody. Glory to God. I'm not saying that you've got to ask God, Lord, is it okay for me to go to the bathroom? Lord, is it No, I'm talking about some specific direction that you need God to do in your life. He will show you of things to come. Come on, somebody. That's what he said when he told Amen, his disciples. He said, I'm going away from you, boys. He said, but I'm going to send back a comforter, one that will comfort you. Somebody better say amen. In a time of trouble, he will comfort you. What the comfort would be? He would tell you to be encouraged. Lead not to your own understanding, but trust in the truth and the living God. Somebody better say amen up in this place and to understand who God is. People, we got to not lean to our own understanding what we think is right but follow the precept and the concept of God's word. Can you say amen? Can you say amen again? Pathway. And I never will forget when I was going home to my mother's house and I was going home and I had this dream and I never would forget this. 
and I was going and I was walking down this path just going on the pathway going to my mother's house and then right where it was a little uh, a little where you go over a bridge there was a shortcut that you have to go down through down through the bottom down there this is a, a a pond that was there but you have to go down through there and then to get up and come out a little bit further to my mom's house so i stood down and i looked in there and i saw all of these eyes looking at me and all of these eyes were nothing but snakes and as soon as i would have stepped down in that particular shortcut they would have bit me and I saw all of that. I said, no. I said, I'm not going down through here. I'm going to get back on this path, pathway on my way home. Somebody better say amen. You want to get on the pathway of righteousness so you can walk home? Come on. Somebody better say amen. Acknowledge God. Put him first in your life. Acknowledge who he is. Know that he is the one that has all knowledge. In the night, wisdom. Come on, somebody. In the night, knowledge. Come on, somebody. He knows everything about you and me. Amen. 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 He knows all things. Yes. Somebody better say amen. amen. So when I got down there, I started getting walking on that path. Just keep on I said, well, you're going to take me a little longer, but I'm going to get to my mother's house. I was going home. And then that proceeded a big, gigantic snake stood in the path. And I looked up at the day. I said, oh, my God, and he was just swerving around, trying to block me from getting home. Somebody better say amen. And I looked up at the snake. Now, this is, I'm telling you. Dreams are come. We know the Bible said dreams come from a multitude of business, but that also is where God can send a message to your subliminal mind that you can understand that God is trying to say something to you. Somebody better say amen. Even Joseph was born in a dream. Don't go to Egypt. Don't go there. Get away. Don't go to Egypt because they're going to kill. They're going to kill all of the children. Come on, somebody. We got to learn and listen to what God is trying to tell us in dreams and in vision. So when I saw the snake up over my head and I just saw it, and then I heard that voice and look over on the side and behold a rod. So I said, and I saw the rod, he said, pick your rod up and swerve it. And I swerved it. But let me tell you, the Spirit of God got in that rod and it cut that snake in half. So God told me, he said, that rod is my word. Glory to God. He said, that word, that rod is my word. And all for you to defeat the enemy, you got to know that word of God. Study to show yourself approved unto the Lord. A workman needed not to be ashamed, but what rightly divide the word of truth. God's word is phenomenal. I don't care what people say. His word is real. And his word is true. And I kept on that path. But let me tell you, the enemy will try to stop all of us from getting home, getting to that heavenly home. He will stop you in a way that he can. He will put obstacles in your way, different things in your way, but that word will defeat the enemy. Jesus said in his word, he said, I beheld Satan as light to fall from heaven. This is how fast I defeated him. Somebody better say yes. Glory to God. When Jesus rose up out of that grave, he said, I got the keys to what? Death and hell. Come on, somebody. Cut no grave. Hold his body down. Somebody better say amen. Oh, grave. Oh, death. That's what Jesus said. Oh, grave. Where is our victory? Oh, death. Where is your sting? You couldn't even sting me because that power in the name of Jesus. Trust that word. Put God first in our life. Ask God for answers. 
that we can ask God about it and he would give us the answer to whatever we need. I remember the time when I was in Mobile, Alabama. I was like about 19 years old. And everybody was fleeing the city. They said God was going to destroy the city. Well, I was 18 at the time because I was getting ready to graduate. And I was just so scared. I didn't know what to do. And they was talking about a prophet prophesied, telling the saints, flee the city. Run to Dothan. Run to Dothan, Alabama. Run to this. I was like, hmm. So I didn't know. 18, 17, 18 years old. And I was telling people I was getting ready to leave school. I was in the top 10 of my class. And I was getting ready to leave school because I heard the man of God, what I heard my sister would tell me what he said, the prophet said, and the prophet was well known about that. Let me tell you, to, did I say this? I don't care what prophet, what bishop, what apostle, what pastor was, in the ministers, that do not go according to this word, I'm not going to follow. So I consulted God. I said, God, what, what, what you want me to do? I, I don't know what to do. I said, I don't know what to do. So I was getting ready to leave school, high school, and not graduate. So I was getting ready to do that. And one of the counselors found out about what I was getting ready to do. She called me to her office. She said, Carol, she said, I heard that you're not going to graduate. She said, you're that type 10 with honor. And you're not going to graduate? I said, no, my God, I'm going to destroy the city and everything like that. She said, OK. She said that she did not come and guess what the prophet said. She told me, she said, well, she said, did God not destroy and kill nor there was eight souls that were saved in the flood. I said, yes, ma'am. I said, I don't realize that. She said, do you believe that there is 10 righteous people in Mobile, Alabama? I said, yes, I do. And I said, I know a lot of them. She said, do you believe that there was five? And I said, yes, I do. That even that's more than that. She said to me with great wisdom, and she said, Carolyn, and I believe that you are a child of God. She said, but if God did not kill, destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, because he could find five righteous people. Come on, somebody. Then he told Lot and his wife to flee the city because they couldn't find five righteous people. Come on, somebody. And so she told me, she said, let me tell you something. The God that I serve will not destroy us if we serve God, girl, that made up my mind. I was through. I graduated, went on and graduated, and, and everything was fine. Some of the people that moved from that city into Dothan, they sold all that they had and sold everything that Mobile never was destroyed. The people came off of their job, they sold that home, they home that they had for years, sold it. Running. The Bible is that he that seeketh to save his life, come on, shall lose it. Come on, because God is our all in all. If God can take care of the flowers in the morning time, the birds that go tweet, tweet, singing, they can find a worm every now and then, they can find them a piece of protein to eat. Come on, somebody. God said, I will take care of my own people. Somebody better say amen. I graduated and I learned they still that was talking about that destruction was coming. I went to my mom. I said, Mother, I said, what are you going to do? Are you going to move? I said, my mom said, no. She said, God did not tell me to go anywhere. She said, I'm going to stand still and see the glow. If that woman would whoo, my children can tell you how my mother was. She said, I'm going to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. She said, if God wanted me to go, he would tell me himself. That planted a seed in me and started telling me, he said, you know what, you got to trust God for everything that you want him to do for you. If you're confused about something, ask God. And then when they was talking about get away from this and get away from that one, and I prayed, I said, Lord, I said, who to follow? Which one of these ministers? 
you want me to follow. I said, I, I, I don't even know. I was just 18. I don't even know nothing about nothing. He showed me a scripture in the Bible. He said, there would be men that would make disciples after themselves and not after God. When he said that, I was through with it. I said, you know what? I'm going to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And that place was a, never strong, destroyed. Some of the people that went over in Dothan, uh, they was black and white. They started having problems with the racism. Let me tell you, that devil, they started fighting each other, doing it. It was a purity mess. God is not like that. Come on, somebody. That's a peace to God. But let me tell you about this, and then I'm going to end. Let me go to 1 Samuel. I want you to go with me to 1 Samuel. Let me tell y'all, God is real. God wants us to commit all of our ways unto him Amen. and acknowledge him for who he is. Yes. And let us commit our works unto the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I tell you, God is so good. He is. And I would, I would take nothing for this God. And I know her. when my mom told me that, she said, but I'm not going to stop you from going. She said, if you want to go, she said, you go ahead and go. That made me to think twice. If mom ain't going, I want that all. Woo, Jesus, I'm standing still. I'm going to be still too. Go with me to 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter. Go with me. Amen. And I'm going to read this to you. And then I'm going to let them, we're going to pray and we're going to go on. And I'm going to start at the seventh verse. Let's see, 30 It said, y'all got to say amen. amen. And David said to Abiathar, the priest of Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the epaw. Do y'all know what the epaw was? Epaw was a vessel that only the priest would wear. And it was holy. It was dedicated unto the Lord. But David needed some help. He needed some help. And he was trying to find an answer. And the Bible said this. When David said, bring me here to the e part. So let, let me go up. I, I got to let y'all see this whole scripture. And they, they go with me to the first verse. And it came to pass when David and his men would come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites, had invaded the south and Ziklag and spit in Ziklag and burned it with fire and that taken the, the women, listen, and had taken the women captive that were therein. They took David wide. They took all of the men, the soldiers wide that was with David. David thought they were safe in a safe place. But that enemy found out where they were and they went and got them. And they slew not any, either great, or either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. But let me tell you, that was still God. They didn't kill David's children. They didn't kill the men wives and the small ones. That was God right there. Come on, somebody. God was providing, even in the midst of a takeaway. Come on, somebody. A captain. God still provided for David. He said, and they went on that way. So David and his men came into the city, and behold, it was burned with fire. That would scare anybody. Your wives and your children are gone. While y'all fighting the enemy one way, the devil came in another way. That's how the enemy would do. He'll put all your attention on one situation. He'll come in in the back way, sideways, any type of way that he can get you. The devil would do that. And listen, burn the city with fire. Their wives and their sons and their daughters was taken captive. They didn't kill them. Thank God. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept. They cried. This is the people started crying to me. Where's my wife? Where's she? Where's my wife? Where's this one? Where's that one? These people were looking for their family. Family is important to us. Y'all better say so. Take it, then David and 
the people that was with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. Now when a person, when you cry like that, you are so, you don't cry every tear. You just, and just, it's just, you so weak. And listen to this. And David, listen to this. When they were so weak and they cried that they had nothing within them. And David, too, too wise, was taken captive. A Hinnaman and the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, and Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him. Listen to this. We're going to start off way better. We was following you. And you, and you led us like this, and these people got out of family because the souls of all the people was grieved. And every man for his sons and for his daughter. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. Can y'all say encourage himself in the Lord? All the way you can uh, encourage yourself, you got to remember what God did for you before. Somebody <laughs> Jerusalem, the ruins that of Jerusalem, so you could build back up the wall. 
Nehemiah went there, told the king what the Lord said, and then the king said, take all that you need. Take all the wood, everything that you need, and the people that you need. And they went, and they built up the walls of Jerusalem. But then the enemy got mad. Listen, people, when you put God first, it doesn't mean that the enemy is not going to attack you. But the enemy will not overtake you. Amen. Somebody better say amen. That's why we just said we give him glory. We get and give him honor. But the enemy did not triumph over me. Why? Because we put God first. Amen. amen. Nehemiah went there and he did everything. But let me tell you one thing that he did. Why I think the enemy was trying to stick. They were building the wall with one hand and had their sword with the other one. That's powerful right there. So when they were building and they had the sword, so that, 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 that's what you got to remember. Always remember that you got to keep fighting. Regardless of what you go through, commit all of your ways unto the Lord. I don't care what is it that you are uh, you need of. I don't care what direction you need to go. Ask God. Ask God, Lord, help me, show me how to get out of this thing. God, what do I need to do? God will open up a way for you. He will show you what you need to do. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand praise. I would encourage each and every one of you, acknowledge him in all of thy ways. And these are a few scriptures you can read on. Colossians 3 and 17. Colossians 3 and 23. I want to say, I'm going to read this and say, it said, whatsoever you do, do it heartily also unto the Lord. People, whatever you do, do it unto the Lord. Amen. Whatever you do, do it unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says this. He said, a man's heart devises his way. But the Lord directs his steps. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. When man's heart is not in the way that it should go, inquire of the Lord, and God will direct your steps. He said, the steps of a good man, what is ordered by the Lord? If you want God, that's why David said, Lord, be a light unto my pathway. I need to know how to see. So every clutter that's in my way, everything that is blocking me, get it out of the way so that I can walk that straight and narrow path for you, Lord. That's what you got to do. That's what you got to remember God for. Put him first in everything that you do. Amen. Ask him. And then the Bible tells you. You will have long life if you keep his commandment. Yeah. And this is the one that I like. Let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord. This is Proverbs 23 and 17. Let not thine heart envy sinners. How many of you know you get tired? Well, I've been looking at Senator Day Crossman, winning the Powerball, Mega Million, <laughs> and I'm looking, come on, God. Yeah. We give us. You know, riches and wealth. He said, but let not thy heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. So every day that God brings, let us fear God. Let us trust God. Let us pursue after God more and more in our life. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand praise. Amen. We thank God for that message. Amen. Acknowledge him. Acknowledge him in all our ways. In all of your ways, please acknowledge God. And you will get out on top. Amen. Everybody stand to your feet with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, if you feel like you want to come down to the altar, you can. Uh, whatever you need, the question that's in the back of your mind, some concerns that you have, ask God. Amen. Ask God. And I'm telling you to ask God. And when you ask God, God will do the thing that you need of him. He will show you a way 
out. Amen. Amen. We're just going to pray. And I ask everybody, if you can, just bow your heads with me. Amen. And just in reference of the Spirit of God. Amen. You don't even have to close your eyes. But then bow your head in reference to the true and the living God. Constantly, if you got something that you can pray over there, that's fine. But people, listen. Let's acknowledge God and let's love him for who he is. Whatever the questions, whatever your challenges are, I don't care, whatever the doctor said, come on somebody, let's acknowledge God in all of our ways and let us lean not to our own understanding. And he will direct our path. He will give us a clear way to go and to walk there on. Bow your heads with the Father God, I thank you for all things in the name of Jesus. I give you honor, I give you glory. I give you praise for who you are, God. God, we can't live without you, we can't make it without you. We ask you, Lord God, help us to acknowledge you in all of our thy ways, all of our ways. And I was asking you this, Lord God, just to bring it to our attention just to ask, and the Bible says, it shall be given unto us. Seek and ye shall find, knock and the door will be open unto us. Father, we acknowledge you today as the all supreme one. We acknowledge you as being an awesome God that can do anything but fail. We acknowledge you, Adonai. Good, awesome are ye. Oh God, we praise you. We praise you right now. And God, I ask you just come into each and every one of our minds, our heart. Let us trust in you for everything in our life, God. Let us put you first every day of our life, all the day long, God. And we forever praise you and bless your name, God. In the name of Jesus, I ask everybody, let's give him some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Let that play come. Hallelujah, Jesus. While you're on your way back to your seat, just say hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the hottest praise. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Oh, God, I feel his presence. Hallelujah. Y'all come on and worship just a little bit. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we love you today. Adonai, we give you praise. We give you glory. We thank you. That's one of the names of God, Adonai. Elohim, awesome Ishmael. Oh my God, hallelujah. God, we praise you, Jesus. Y'all, come on, just give God some praise. Just tell him how much you love him. Just give God some praise, y'all. We gotta just give us a few minutes just to give God praise. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Just give him a little bit of praise and I'm going to let y'all go. Let me just. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For everything that 
I've been through because he, God's not gonna give us anything that we can't handle. Right? That's right. So That's right. That's I just feel like the devil was trying to trick me and deceive me and stuff like right. that. But one thing about God, He is everything. Like, and I know that He is yes. everything to me, and it's just like. I was telling my auntie outside, like, I just still cannot get over the fact that Jesus really died on the cross for yes. us, for me, yes. for you, for our sins, yes. literally for our sins. He don't know us, yes. but he know us. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it's just like, I just, that alone has always been in my heart and always, ever since I was a child, it always made me feel like, I was so sorry for him, you know, yeah, but yeah. it's no need to be sorry for him. It's no need to feel yeah. bad for him because yeah. he is God. Yeah. He is the king yeah. and he is the truth and the life and he will always be here for us. So it's just like once you get over yourself, over your ignorance, over your... <laughs> following Jesus, once you come into the realization that you need to follow him, right. you will always and forever be with God. Amen. But if you live your life separate from him, that's what it's going to be. You're going to go through hell. Literally. You're going to go through it. Because you're not with him. You know? So that's, that's the... Amen. So that is awesome. That is awesome, y'all. That's her enlightenment. That's her That is really something. We just thank God for that. Amen. Amen. So, anybody else? Amen. Who wants to say something?
right now in the name of Jesus. Go with us as we travel, Lord God. Make our uh, passageway safe. Yes, God. God, in the name of Jesus, send your God and an angel to protect us from danger, sin, and unseen. These and other blessings I ask in the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.